Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be answering a question from M. Ball. How long does it take for a sightseeing trip around Mars and can we use solar wind and solar sails to build up speed? So in this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about solar sails. Let's start. A common misconception is the analogy of a solar sail to that of a sailboat. These boats are propelled by wind hitting the sails, but the wind is not pushing the boat forward as most people might think. What's actually happening is that the wind creates a high and low pressure regions on each side of the sail, and the boat is essentially sucked into the low pressure zone. Solar sails are a method of propelling through space. However, despite its name, it has nothing to do with solar wind, which are charged particles outflowing from the sun. The sun also gives off a constant stream of photons. And these photons that we see as light, even though they don't carry any mass, they carry energy and a small amount of momentum. And when the photons hit the reflective surface of a solar sail, it bounces off the sail and transfers some of its momentum to the spacecraft. It is more analogous to how momentum is transferred from a cue ball when it hits another ball in a game of pool rather than a sailboat. 20 or 30 years ago, solar sails weren't thought to be feasible because spacecraft were just too bulky and heavy. But with current technology, it's been possible to make spacecraft lightweight. And this is super important because unlike chemical propulsion used in rockets that reach high accelerations initially, solar sails are not the fastest thing to start off with. But they can sail for a long distance and slowly gain the speed. Force equals mass times acceleration. So as long as you have a constant power source, you can achieve high acceleration with low mass. Theoretically, solar sails can achieve 10 to 20% the speed of light. And this has been proven to work with lasers as a power source rather than the sun. Because to maintain this acceleration, you need a constant source of power. And with the sun, the further away you get, the less energy and hence less acceleration. Based on these speeds, of course, it might be tempting to take a solar sail to Mars. However, the main caveat is that solar sails are extremely fragile because they need to be made extremely thin. Current solar sails are made of materials like mylar, which are only a few microns thick or a few thousandths of a millimeter. With the additional weight of humans, a spacecraft going to Mars would need to have gigantic solar sails, kilometers across, just to get there on the same time scale as chemical rockets. Getting such a fragile sail into space is challenging. You'd need to pack, launch, and then deploy the sails in space. Ideally, in the future, we would want to make them out of self-healing materials, and this would help, but the main advantage, however, is that you don't require fuel which is expensive to get into space and will run out. Solar cells don't use any fuel. We can keep thrusting as long as the sun is shining. Icarus was the first spacecraft to successfully demonstrate solar cell technology. It was launched by the Japanese space agency JAXA in 2010 and flew by Venus six months later. Icarus was able to reach speeds of 800 miles per hour. Besides speed and the endless supply of thrust, another advantage of the solar cell is how easy they are to maneuver. To steer conventional propulsion systems, you need to thrust from burning fuel. And generally, this is kind of hard to come by. So you can also get additional boosts by performing gravity assist maneuvers by slingshotting around giant planets like Jupiter. The gravity of the planet can help you slow down, change directions, or simply increase your speed. For solar sails, all you need is asymmetric thrust. So in the case of Icarus, an electric optic coating on the sail could be turned dark in areas to absorb light instead of reflecting it. Alternatively, NASA's NEA scout mission used a sliding mechanism that moves the satellite back and forth relative to the booms where the sail is deployed. 
But photons aren't the only fuel that we can use generated by the sun. Going back to solar wind, e-sails or electric sails consist of thin wires surrounding a spacecraft that generate a positively charged electric field. Protons in the solar wind are expelled by this electric field and thrust the spacecraft forward as they are pushed away. E-cells require an electron gun to discharge the wires of electrons in the solar wind so that it can maintain a positive electric field. And this is typically powered by a solar panel, but other than that, E-cells don't require propellant. But they can also be challenging in preventing the long thin wires from bending as they're being bombarded by solar wind. The Voyager missions took 35 years to reach the edge of our solar system, but a solar sail would be able to do it in just 20 and an e-sail could do it in just 10. There are also magnetic sails or mag sails that work in a similar way deflecting solar wind with a static magnetic field, but that's all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed the video as usual. Get yourself a t-shirt if you want to support me and simply leave me a like, share and subscribe.